Is it a piece of furniture? I don't know. Is it a book? I don't know. Is it a wig? What's on that guy's head? That's the idea that we were trying to do with this show. Hi, everybody. Take a look in here. Welcome to this installment of Hey Pete, it's a creative life. My name's Pete, uh, and today we're going to talk about props. And so here we are in the Bethany prop room, uh, and specifically I wanted to talk to you about some props that I made for a play that I directed years ago. The play was called Tartuffe by Moliere. Moliere is the best known playwright of the French Renaissance, and his dates are from 1622 to 1673. These props are interesting to me because they really are almost more costumes. It falls in the realm of the prop maker more than the costumer um, because it deals with sculpture uh, and they were almost more like pieces of furniture. And what I'm talking about are wigs. Okay, sidebar you guys. What you have to know is in France, in the 17th century is that fashion was everything and it was ornate and it was sometimes gaudy and this meant wigs for the dudes. Before I show you the wigs though, I gotta show you this. I have become a fan of these. Whenever you're making props that have to fit an actor's head, I, I sometimes deal with these. I like these. This is just a hard hat. It's a low grade construction hard hat. You can get these at your your local home store, and uh, what, what I think is important about these things is this apparatus here in the middle. This allows you to uh, change the size. If you've got a big head, I have a big head. I have a size fat head. Uh, this thing can really cinch down on a small head. If you have an actor with a really small head, it, it actually becomes harder because then this thing doesn't cinch down. For some of these wigs that I'm ab about to show you, uh, they have a lot of weight. <laughs> and so you need this thing to really hug their head really good. So this, this thing's not gonna come off, you know? So sometimes smaller heads, you, if you have to actually put some more padding in there, and we did uh, for a few of these wigs too. Basically what I had to start doing is I had to start making a sculpture <laughs> on top of a hard hat that then is going to look like a wig. So let's take a look at one of the wigs. <laughs> I needed, for my production of Tartuffe, wigs that seemed like furniture. I wanted people to have like sh things that might look like chairs or books or scrolls on their head. Um, it, it was a stylized rendition of Tartuffe. And so everybody had to seem over the top. So in the play Tartuffe, we have the character Organ, and he is the owner of the house, and he's kind of a, 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 a dummy. He's not smart, he's a stupid guy. We wanted his hair to look like two mounds, but this is not hair, it is fabric. And so I found a fabric that was uh, kind of in storage for us and then uh, had students who then, once this thing was all covered, could actually put uh, little tassels and bows on this thing. Uh, Organ's kind of a fop, uh, foppery was very popular. But what we do is we start whoop, with the, with that, hard hat thing and you can see this is made for an actor with a uh, a small head so we have to put this padding in i can easily take that out uh, maybe i can actually model this thing i'll try to do that there it's beautiful i am organ the owner of the house we're missing a few bows and things and a little bit of the frou-frou and stuff but but you can see that it is just two mounds of expandable foam. So what we first have to do, what I first did is I take this hat and I got, for demonstrative purposes, this hat right here. Uh, and then I make a wire armature that is basically chicken wire uh, in the shape of what I want the wig to be. Uh, and I've done a lot of research, a lot of period research on what kind of wigs uh, Frenchmen were wearing at the time, and this was actually a style. Two mounds of hair like this. Check it out. Even Moliere's patron, the French king Louis XIV, had a wig with two mounds on it like that. 
We wanted it to be a little bit more cartoony, so we made the mounds pretty big. So we kind of did these really enormously exaggerated mounds. Um, and then once I have the chicken wire in here, I spray what we call stupid foam. This is stupid foam. <laughs> it's called stupid foam because it's so stupid. Because it never comes off. If you put it, if you get it on your hands, you're in trouble. You gotta really wash your hands really, really well. Mineral spirits, the rest of it. Uh, but anyways, you got uh, the armature here, and then you have to just day after day put expandable foam in here. It comes in a can. You squirt it out, uh, and then uh, you just sort of fill the armature with expandable foam. That takes days because you got to do it in layers. If you try to do it all at once, the foam in the middle will never dry. <laughs> you want the foam in the middle to dry. Uh, so you make, you make your mounds and then you take a rasp or a file and you're filing all around the, uh, the, whole, the whole thing. Okay, so this is wig number one. This is Organ's wig. This is uh, Organ from Tartuffe. Let's take a look at another one. Same method here. This one is the butt head wig. Here, I'll try it on. Hopefully I can get it to fit. Again, I've got a big head. Okay, so what's going on with this? First of all, uh, I had to, again, start with the hat. Start with the, uh, the hat, that, uh, the hard hat. Then I make an armature, and this time I made an armature uh, that kind of resembled a butt. That was by accident, by the way. I wasn't meaning for that to happen. That's just the way it panned out. It ended up looking like a butt. As a matter of fact, I believe this was the wig that I wanted Organ or Tartuffe to have at first, but then it was just so butt looking that I had to change it. Um, but uh, I got some wooden ornamentation here. This is just a piece that I got from my local uh, home store, uh, Menards, and I did some stenciling up here. And then these are just tubes of, uh, they're insulation tubes uh, for pipes, pipe insulation. So this is a piece of pipe insulation, you guys. It just looks like this. Uh, it's cushy. It's, it's just the stuff that goes around pipes, you know? Uh, keeps them from freezing. But you can use this for all kind of sculpture materials and things like that. Here's what it, come, here's what it looks like in the bag. Uh, so, yeah, that's pipe insulation. And then lots of doilies. If I can zoom in on there, you can sort of see that I just pasted this whole thing with doilies. Uh, the inside, there's the hat, uh, and the outside too. So the whole thing kind of came out sort of a gray. I think I painted it all gray. And then I just put gold do and white doilies all over this thing. And then this big wooden, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just a, a piece of tooled wood that you would put over a fireplace mantle or something like that or over a doorway. Uh, we just spray painted it gold and we pinned it on here. You can very easily do it with pins because this is all just foam. Uh, again, this took days to do. There's the crack. <laughs> it's the butt. Uh, and here's the back of it. And it sort of looks like you have a moat here too. Okay, so this is the bailiff's wig. The bailiff had this wig. The bailiff would come in at the end and it gets a big laugh at the end of the show because that's when he shows up and then he comes in with a big butt on his head. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a visual bit. Um, but let's take a look at another one. Okay, this wig I did not make. Uh, this one was done by our customer, Britt Katoon, but I love it. Uh, and it is Tartuffe's wig. So when he first enters, he wears this very ridiculous wig. We just put uh, fiber fill padding up in the top here. So it's not, it's gonna cover my whole head. Normally it sits like right up here. And he enters and you know, and he, he does his snuff box like, hmm, and he's got a mole on his cheek and he looks very French and everything. So how is this thing made? It doesn't have the hat like the others. This one was not sculpted the same way. This is all just many, many tubes of pipe insulation cut to uh, various uh, lengths. And then our customer just took a very interesting kind of paisley corduroy fabric and she didn't even have to, she didn't have to have to really sew it. Uh, and maybe she glued it a little bit. She just tucked, she wrapped each piece, each, she cut fabric to wrap around each one of these tubes. 
and then just tucked it in the ends. This is actually loose. It still comes out, but it was still perfectly good for the show. It doesn't have to be, you know, the audience only sees it from more than 20 feet away anyways. Um, and so, and then she sewed each piece. So every, every little dangly piece is just sewn together like that. Here's the back of the wig. This one needs a couple stitches have broken. But this one has more of an airy feel. This one has a little bit more of a of a, an interesting kind of uh, lightness about it. It is the lightest of the wigs that I'm about to show you too, or that I am showing you. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just fun. I love, do you know that I love the creative process? Uh, and I love that it's uh, collaborative too. We had student workers help work with these things too. It's just sort of fun to, to create a new idea, you know, to make something that uh, is going to bring something sort of new to the world. Uh, this was a, a real interesting take on a play that is basically the French Renaissance. Uh, and we are hearkening back to the French Renaissance. We're, we're, we're sort of mimicking the style of it, but we're doing it in a real 21st century way. That's, that's fun. That's super fun. Uh, and so uh, the last wig, though, is my favorite. And so I'll get that right now. Okay, this one's my fave, uh, and a lot of happy accidents uh, happened with this one. That's another thing I love about the creative process is sometimes you just have to start because you don't know where you're going until you finish, and sometimes just little interesting creative opportunities open up for you, and then you can come up with something that's uh, even more unique than you thought. Um, I wanted, this is for Monsieur Loyal, and he is the basically Tartuffe's lawyer who's going to come in and they're basically kicking Organ out of his own house. I wanted his head to look like a book or a scroll or something. He's a, he's a, he's a lawyer, you know, and uh, he's in the books and he's studied law. And so this is what we came up with. Again, it starts with that, that headpiece. Same technique as before. Uh, we're we're uh, creating an armature with chicken wire uh, that kind of looks like a, a book. For this particular one, I believe I wasn't using chicken wire. Um, I was using something called hardware cloth. It's more of a rigid sort of chicken wire. Okay, and this is hardware cloth. It looks like this. It comes in a roll. It kind of resembles chicken wire, but it's it's tighter. Uh, the stuff that I used on the wigs, though, um, was not this tight. This is these have quarter inch squares. Uh, the stuff that I used was half inch squares, but it's the same kind of stuff. You know, it comes on a roll like this, uh, and um, and you can sculpt with it. You can make armatures with it. Uh, so hardware cloth looks like this. You can shape it to look like this, and then I again days and days and days of of stupid foam, and then you shape the stupid foam. You know, you can take your files just like same thing with the the butt wig, uh, or in the two the two towers. Um, you're shaping it with a file. You're using sandpaper. You're creating uh, the shapes of these of these wigs. I'll try this one on. Hopefully, it'll fit. I haven't tried it yet. So this so you can imagine this is kind of hilarious. If an actor comes in. And it's the first time he's taller than the door that he comes in, <laughs> you know, so he has to duck to come into the door You know, there's a lot of comic potential here. Okay, so what's going on with this with this wig? Well, okay Once I had the main shape that was carved out of the uh, foam um, we got uh, Basically these curls here that are happening. Okay, so I had to go in there with a small rat tail file uh, And just basically carve out all this stuff. The hair is hot glue Okay, so I'm basically sculpting with hot glue. I'm taking the hot glue gun and I'm just making stripes You know just to kind of give it the hair sort of look again on the sides. We still have that uh, the uh, pipe insulation and then this is just the, the stupid foam itself. It looks like a cauliflower, you know, but we wanted it to just look like a tuft of hair. Okay, so uh, that's there. Um, and then in the back, I wanted it to sort of look like there's a part. His hair is all parted in the back, so it's all going to one side and going to the other side. Um, and then there's a ponytail with an interesting goofball ribbon. And this is... The back, I'm not crazy about, um, but uh, the ribbon really does hide a lot of little you know, mistakes that, or things that aren't as, as aesthetically nice. 
But it's amazing how once you put paint on these hot glue strips, it really does pop out. It does look like hair. So I, I used, I, I painted the whole thing brown first, uh, and then I dusted it with gold spray paint just to give it a little bit of sheen. Just dusted it, just so it has a little bit of that glittery look. And then put on the... Um, uh, uh, just um, oh, and this is all after I did the hot glue, hot glue first, then the paint. You know, I get all the, I get the whole thing looking like it's supposed to look, and then I painted it. Um, and then uh, I, I put a, I just dry brushed tan and white over the top of this, and it really made these striations pop out. Oh, and by the way, what what's when you're working in the theater and you're working on things like this, sometimes you're making your own playbook because I don't know anybody who's made things like this. Uh, and so you are just sort of making it up. Again, that's what's fun about the process. And when you're dealing with other creative people who are on board with you, they've got the similar vision because you're all working towards a common goal. You can create some really interesting things. This is, what, this is my favorite happy accident. I happen to find this fabric down in the... Uh, in the costume room, and it was only big enough for this thing. <laughs> Wasn't big enough for a costume, so it was a real easy piece for me to just sort of go and nab. And it has this really interesting sheen to it. Look at how it's sort of velvety under the stage lights. That thing just glowed, and it, it kind of makes it look like the whole thing has that texture. But it, it, it just goes with the paint job, you know? Since I spray painted it with the dusting of gold, when I saw this, I was like, oh, are you kidding me? This is perfect. And it's just nailed. I, I put a little bit of uh, spray adhesive all over the top of here. Uh, and then I just put the fabric over the top of that. And then it's just nailed. Seriously, it's just nails. All, there's a nail here. There's a nail here. I just, and the audience should be able to see those. I've just got these little nails that are kind of holding this whole, whole thing on. And the nails go right down the, uh, the part, too. You can sort of see them there, too. Oh, and you don't have to pound anything in. This is just stupid foam. This is like expandable foam. It's plastic. You know? You know? It's, it's, it's solid. But I just took a, an eight-penny nail. Maybe these are six-penny nails. And you just push them in. It's just like push-pin work. <laughs> Just like that. I didn't use a hammer on this. It's not that bad. And it worked out. So, again, I had an actor who was very tall, and we gave him heels, so he was even taller, and he had a very small head, so we had to really cinch this thing down onto his head. That's why I need these things, right? Because this is like a 10-pound wig. <laughs> you know, it's really heavy. Uh, and so, he walks in. Audience gets a big laugh. He towers over Organ, who is very, you know, much shorter than, than Monsieur Loyal. Uh, and, uh, and so he looks over him like this. You know, is it a piece of furniture? I don't know. Is it a book? I don't know. Is it a wig? What's on that guy's head? That's the idea that we were trying to do with this show. It's, it's a polymer, and, and once it hits the air, it expands, and it turns into this uh, kind of puffy air pocket. It's kind of like bread rising. Um, I'll see if I can demonstrate uh, how you do this real quick. Um, but once you use this, uh, you just want to make sure you're wearing rubber gloves, latex gloves, probably disposable gloves. If you get this on your hand, you're going to be washing them with mineral spirits for about 20 minutes just to get that junk off, you, it, unless you get it off before it sets. But it sets quickly, uh, and it's kind of finicky. Again, when you put this stuff in layers, you don't want to put a whole bunch down um, like the size of a basketball because the middle will never dry. It will never dry, not even for years. And, and, and then you'll get these weird air cavities in there. So you got to do layer by layer by layer. Let that layer dry. Come back the next day. Let that layer dry, etc. So a little finicky, but I use it all the time. But it's so stupid. Oh, just a little bit more about stupid foam is what is it normally used for? <laughs> it's not maybe meant for props, but it's uh, usually uh, used for insulation. If you got like a leaky window or something, or when people are putting windows in your house, they put stupid foam in the cracks. The expandable foam. <laughs> great stuff. Uh, it's called great stuff. I call it stupid foam. <laughs> hi, everybody. A friend of mine just happened into the shop today. This is John Wagner. Say hi, John Wagner. Hi. Now you say hi, John Wagner. Hi, John 
Wagner. Anyways, he's going to video, I'm gonna try and demonstrate quick just how to open up a can of stupid foam and use it real fast. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so you, the can comes with a little nozzle just like this and you're gonna screw that on top uh, of the can like that. Shake it good, make sure it's really good and shaked. Uh, and then you gotta, you gotta turn it upside down. So uh, right now I'm just gonna use this as the trigger. You can use this like the trigger too. Either way, you wanna make sure you're using gloves. Always use gloves. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm not using gloves, uh, but, but I'm not gonna touch it. I don't wanna touch it. Uh, so it comes out of there. And you can imagine if I've got like an, a, a chicken wire armature or something on here, I can actually start, uh, you know, junking it in there. But again, use layers. If I made a big mound this tall, it would never dry in the middle. So you got to make sure you're just doing little layers. And it kind of looks like that poop emoji. So this is, this is now going to dry. This piece of wood is now forever ruined. <laughs> uh, and then there will be permanently affixed to this piece of wood a mound of stupid foam. Uh, and then normally I would use the whole can because this dries and it's, it's hard to salvage a can. But you can just keep getting more cans. So anyways, stupid foam. And thank you, John. Yeah. Anyways, you guys, this is uh, fun for me to show you guys these things that, uh, that we make. Uh, again, here I'm at the Bethany Lutheran College prop room, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did enjoy this video, I hope that you will like and subscribe to Hey Pete, uh, and we'll try and get more of these things coming out all the time. It's a creative life, you guys. My name's Pete. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.